Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 44th graduating ceremony of Seoul International School for our class of 2021. Our ceremony will start shortly. Please take your seats. 지금부터 저희 서울 국제학교 44회 졸업식을 시작하겠습니다. 모두 자리에 앉아 주시기 바랍니다. We'll begin the ceremony with a procession from our leadership team and our graduating class. Please welcome our leadership team, graduating class of 2021, with a warm applause. So, the first of the 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 I would like to now invite our high school principal, Dr. James Gerhard, to begin this year's graduation ceremony with an invocation. Thank you. Thank you, good evening. The weather stayed on our side, so all right. Good afternoon, welcome to Seoul International School. Thank you for joining us today for our school's 44th graduation ceremony. I'm Dr. Jim Gerhardt, the high school principal at SIS. We're very pleased to be here today to honor the class of 2021. Of all dates on the school calendar, this one creates the most indelible memories. As at most schools, at SIS, all roads lead to graduation. 
I want to take a second to give a shout out to all of our SIS friends, family, alumni, fellow teachers and students who are watching on our SIS live stream from around the world. Welcome everyone. We wish you were here to join us. Special hellos to proud grandmothers Ann Gaines and Bobby Taller in Texas. Yeehaw. On behalf of the Seoul International School founder, Mr. Edward Adams, our board of directors, our head of school, Mr. Michael Coliani, high school assistant principal, Mr. Gray Macklin, our entire highly accomplished high school faculty, the SIS administrative and management staff, and our whole school community. I'm happy to welcome everyone, along with parents and these senior graduates, to our commencement ceremony. We stand before you today to announce and complete the long journey that culminates in the granting of the SIS diploma. And we validate and certify that these graduates present now before us have officially met the qualifying criteria towards the conferral of the high school diploma from Seoul International School. Congratulations to our many parents on today's event. Parents, today is a day that many of you have long envisioned and a day that allows many of you to breathe a huge sigh of relief. You have all worked very hard to help your child reach this milestone. Behind these successful young adults are the parents whose influence provides the wisdom, values, encouragement, love, and devotion that have given these young people the confidence and the will to succeed. We are more than appreciative of the attention and care of our parents over the last 16 months. You have been there for many of our in-house virtual classes, have lamented the loss of trips, activities, and sporting events, and have shared more closely the successes and challenges of this school year with your son or daughter. We hope that a bright spot in these misadventures has been the stronger relationship you may now share with your child and your family. Graduates, there is no better way to kick off your big day and to show some fine appreciation to your wonderful parents. Parents, thank you for all you have done for your child. Let's see how we do on the next one. <laughs> when we talk about a long journey, we have some students who have navigated a truly epic sojourn through our entire SIS program. I would like to ask the following students to please stand and be recognized. Albert Hong, Min Chang, Addy Choi, Elaine Choi. Please stand, please students. Christine Kim, Janice Park. Janice, please stand wherever you are. Christine Yoon, Edward Ahn, Jessica Ju, and Michelle Jung. These seniors have been here since junior kindergarten in 2007. Collectively, collectively, these 10 students have spent 140 years at SIS. Okay. Thank you. You can be seated now. Congratulations. Wonderful journey. And And thank you very much to, to the parents of those students as well. You know, the only other person to have been at SIS for more than 100 years was Mr. Schneider. <laughs> Seniors, congratulations to all of you. Your credit to the institution that is Seoul International School. You're a valuable member of a proud family family whose beginnings rested in the ideals of Edward Adams when he founded the school in 1973. You have survived one of the most unique years in our school's history. Thank you for making it so interesting for us. Many times at the end of the year, seniors are cautioned to be prepared to face challenges, disappointments, and uncertainties, to understand frustration, to be ready to help family and friends when they're in need. These frustrations are a part of the real world, you're told, situations you will face in the future. For all of you, 
the last 16 months has been the epitome of these cautions and these challenges. If you can begin to realize that life is a series of challenges and respond to them in the way you have, the same way over your last two years of high school, you'll be all right. Writer Leo Tolstoy said that everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing themselves. In the last few months, you have not had the choice to not change yourself. You were given this crisis and you turned it into a vast opportunity. I have to say, if we had to go through the last 20 months with a group of young adults, these graduates were a pretty good group to have navigated that sentence. Your continued resilience in the face of challenge has been admirable. It is well known that resilience creates optimism in people and that resilient people are the most optimistic. You are absolutely one of the most resilient and resourceful groups to ever graduate from SIS. That alone is power, that is meaning, that gives you an independent optimism to seek and find your accomplishments in this world. Alas, you're not going out into the real world, as they say. So I will not waste time giving you falsehoods about how successful you will be out there. You're venturing forth into the wilds and unforgiving territories of one of the most ferocious landscapes of our modern society, the privileged campuses of U.S. News & World Report's top 100 colleges. Rest assured, you still need to be careful out there. You still need to recognize the spark and inspiration that got you here today. You need to hold dear the values that your family has raised you with. You need to build on the foundation of learning that our academic program prepared you with. On your own, you will need to figure out how to focus on your personal well-being and sustaining a happy life. You have prepared well and we look forward to hearing about your successes. We are proud of the fact that we continued your academic years in an unfaltering, consistent, and excellent style, including a virtual matter over the last year. What made the difference? As always, our teachers were the key. The diligence and effort by our high school faculty was the main reason for the success of our program and our students, and the biggest factor in the success of our graduates today. Our teachers' continued hard work and effort is the bank that backs our educational currency. It has been a great four years for you with these dedicated faculty members. Before we close, I'd like to ask that we take time to thank all the great teachers of SIS. Over to. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to you all for being an individual part of the greatness of our program over the past four years. I wish you the best of luck in the future and know that you will continue to find your own success and continue to be a resilient optimist. Class of 2021, remember, once a tiger, always a tiger. Thank you folks and good luck. This evening, we congratulate the senior class of 2021 for your achievements over the past years and for graduation from SIS today. But let's also take a few moments to acknowledge some, some of the special but often overlooked achievements of those who deserve our praise and for whom we offer our utmost respect and admiration. First of all, to the student who does all the homework in her or his most challenging subjects and turns it in always on time, who studies conscientiously for tests and shows up during office hours, who has never once read the cliff notes instead of the actual book, and who nevertheless, and despite all that hard work and perseverance, manages to earn a grade no higher than an 80 
which is still pretty good to my way of thinking. You have already done exceptionally well. School is the only place in the world where you're expected to be an expert in, in everything. Math, science, art, drama, PE, IT, English, Chinese, history, economics, psychology, and all simultaneously. At the same time, you might be an editor, a team captain, the president of a club, or even two, a debater, a photographer. So much has been expected of you. Or maybe it's you who have pushed yourself to be an expert in all of these various and varied endeavors. But you know, even Albert Einstein was no expert in IT. None of Leonardo's masterpieces even made it, made the cut for the SIS. AP Art Show, and no one to my knowledge has ever seen or heard of either Einstein or Da Vinci modeling in a Habitat for Humanity streetwear fashion show, like many of you and Mr. Macklin did just a few weeks ago. That was very dude, Mr. Macklin. In real life, each of you will be great at what you do best, and you will let others excel at what they do best. For the rest of your life, you won't have any memories of what those grades were. Were they in the 80s or the 90s? Does it really matter? You'll bring your character and your capacity for hard work to all your future endeavors. During middle school and high school, some of you have may felt like an outsider at every gathering of insiders. You may have wondered what it's like to feel quite strongly to be part of a group whose very membership bestows identity. How easy it may have been to be told where to go, with whom to go, what to wear, what music to listen to, and what to think about those both inside and outside the group. In truth, however, membership in a group is almost always for the, pre for the present. Insiders unavoidably wonder if they're the next to be cast out. But a gift of friendship that overcomes current situations and pressures, and that recognizes the opportunity for being a friend wherever and with whomever it might appear, to be able to recognize that and become that friend will enlighten your life forever. To those bench warmers and team managers who follow every play without getting a dirt mark on their new SIS team shirts or uniforms, Take joy in your love of the game and your teammates' acknowledgement of your loyalty to them. You may never score the winning basket or hit the championship volley or feel the exultation your teammates, of your teammates toward you after a particular joyful victory, but you'll always have the satisfaction of your contribution to it through your presence and support you have provided to your friends. When you look back on those times, what you'll remember is the pride of wearing the orange and black Tigers uniform and the privilege of supporting your teammates and friends. They really appreciate you. To the student who made a hasty exit from Ms. Shelby's lab to the nurse's room or the restroom during the anatomy and physiology class on dissection day, or chose to accept the consequences of standing back and letting others do the cutting and slicing. It's a great gift to love animals. Not everyone has that. When you can sit in the presence of another creature, when you can earn an animal's trust, you are participating in one of the great pleasures and gifts of life. To be one with nature and to be able to communicate with life's creatures as well as those with more human qualities and subsequent, subsequent frailties. To the student who bombed the summative in math because he stayed up all night talking to a friend who was distressed and who had no choice, no one else to turn to but you. There is honor in your choice. You can always make up the math lessons, but understanding and empathizing with the feelings of others is one of life's most important gifts. Today, we as a school commend you for the 99.9% .9 you've earned in empathy, the Tiger's Award you've earned for your love of others. Finally, Allow me to finish with a quote from Jackie Robinson, American sportsman and civil rights leader. This is what Jackie has etched on his tombstone. A life is not important except for the impact it has on others. 
I will leave you with those words and with the best wishes of your teachers, school leaders, and the rest of the entire school community. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Brian Hamm, our salutatorian, followed by Eric Wong, our valedictorian. They'll be followed by a choral tribute uh, by our ambassadors, uh, conducted today by Julia Kim. Okay, Brian? It's only fitting, in a way, that I end my time at SIS the way I spent countless Wednesday and Friday afternoons, on the soccer pitch with severely limited attendance in the bleachers. <laughs> Class of 2021, teachers, parents, relatives, administrators. When I first started writing this speech, I had big hopes. I wanted to be as inspirational as possible. Naively, I thought I would be able to write a five-minute speech so impactful and rousing that, I don't know, students will start doing push-ups on the field. And as if I were completing a routine school project, I googled best grad speeches and listened to rhetorical masterpieces from incredible people like Steve Jobs, Michelle Obama, Amy Poehler, etc. Alongside a video titled, Valedictorian Dumps Girlfriend in Graduation Speech. Thankfully, I'm neither the valedict valedictorian nor do I have a girlfriend. And then I realized the painfully and laughably obvious difference that I haven't accomplished anything in my life. Who am I to stand in front of you guys and lecture hundreds of people on how to live life when I haven't lived life myself or even graduated high school yet? Me standing here was decided by just a single number. So I thought I might as well begin by talking about numbers. And I have to say, they scare me. And I'm sure they scare you too. Even sports teams spend millions upon millions of dollars to try and conquer the numbers, statistics, big data analysis, whatever they can do to push a 70% win probability to 71%. And then your star player John Terry slips while taking a penalty kick and you've lost the Champions League final. And that's life, isn't it? Life at times seems to be dictated solely by that magic word, luck. A word that was dejectedly mentioned by my friend who got into one of his dream colleges but got rejected from others. Ward also screamed furiously by salty friends after it pulled full houses back to back. Luck is a terrifying concept. The idea that we have trivial control over our destinies, that our futures can be flung in diametrically opposite directions just based on a coin flip from God. But what I've realized over the few years I've been alive is that luck is more fair than we think. It happens to everyone, and what separates people is whether they take advantage of their fortune or not. And therefore, luck doesn't exist. Never trivialize your accomplishments to a stroke of luck when you grab an opportunity that others cannot. When opportunity knocks, some are in the backyard looking for four-leaf clovers, goes a Polish proverb. When I look back at my years in high school and think about the so-called unlucky and lucky moments, the whole pandemic but getting to wake up at 7.59 a.m. in the morning, breaking my wrist while having my friends tie my shoelaces for me, and of course, getting to make this speech in the first place, I think it roughly evens out. And I'm a firm, if slightly optimistic, believer that it always will. To my friends, who a couple days ago told me that I don't show enough emotion, I say that if there's one thing I've learned at SIS, is that genuinely good people are hard to come by. So when you meet them, you do your best to not let them go. Thank you for all the laughs that were shared and tears that were shed throughout the past 12 years. Of course, thank you to my parents, my mother, who fearlessly guided me through this crazy and complex world and taught me how to make spaghetti. My father, my cool, collected father, who I've never even seen get road rage, and someone who taught me the value of rational thought. And last but not least, thank you to my brother, Andrew, I've now spent 18 years desperately chasing your footprints, trying to be just like you, yet falling miserably short every single day. 
Exactly three years ago, you were on this podium making a speech. And I was in the audience, and I don't remember a single word you said. But what I do remember is telling myself that a thousand days later, I would be on this podium making a speech of my own. And when I did, these were the words I would be saying. I've always been asked, isn't it terrible to be constantly compared to your brother, or to be only known as Andrew's younger sibling? And I pretended to agree with them at the time, but on the inside, it was my greatest honor to even be remotely compared to someone as admirable and virtuous as you. If luck truly is impartial, I've used all of mine on meeting the best people in the world. Thank you. I have to say my uh, thank yous aren't as personal or as good as Brian's, but before I begin, I do want to thank my incredible parents, my mom and my dad and my sister as well. And I can't also forget some of my amazing friends and some life-changing teachers as well. Maybe it's a bit cliche, but I want to start my speech today with my senior yearbook quote, my favorite line from the Broadway musical Hamilton. Following the death of her husband, Hamilton's wife Eliza reflects in the play's final song, and she says, When our time is up, have we done enough? Will they tell our story? Well, class of 2021, our time is up, and now it's, tur and now it's our turn to ask, have we done enough? Will they tell our story? Let's start with that first question, have we done enough? In answering, I think it's appropriate to look back at some of our accomplishments as a class. Over the past four years, our varsity teams have championed eight kayak conferences, seven kayak tournaments, and three ISA tournaments. We have artistic peers sitting to my left and right that have won awards from scholars from Scholastic Art, Young Arts, and Groove Magazine. Musically, our band, Wind Ensemble, Strings Group, Orchestra, and Ambassadors Choir have all won Kayak's highest distinction, the Platinum Rating, multiple times. Let's also not forget that these accolades are despite COVID canceling countless competitions this past year. In short, Class of 2021, we are one of the most accomplished classes to ever graduate from this school. And that's something to be proud of. So to answer the question, have we done enough? God, I really hope so, because if this isn't, I'm really not sure what is. That leaves us with Eliza's second question. Class of 2021, will they tell our story? Now, let's be real. I don't think anyone's going to sit around a proverbial campfire and tell a literal story about us, per se. Rather, when I hear the word story, what I really hear is the word legacy. So in truth, I think Eliza's actually asking, will our impact outlive us when we're gone? I believe it will. Some of my classmates, including but not limited to, Evelyn, Sean Yoon, Anthony, and Nathan founded new clubs during the time of SIS. Their impact will outlive them through the underclassmen who will continue joining WWF and Ping Pong Club next semester. This past year, Steve Yee, Hyunmin, Celine and Leo helped lead Bamington's transition into becoming an official varsity sport for the first time. Their legacies will outlive them to be championships, and varsity Bamington, uh, that varsity Bamington will be bringing home these next few seasons. I also want to honor my friend, our salutatorian Brian Hahn, who in his sophomore year penned a school newspaper article that sparked reform to drastically shorten our lunch lines. His impact will outlive him every school day at 12.40 when high schoolers go to grab their lunch using his proposed line system. In other words, class of 2021, our work will continue to impact SIS long after we are physically gone. 
And it's through that legacy that our story and our memory continue to be told. In these respects, I think it's safe to say that we've done enough, and our story will be told. I suppose, then, that the only question that really remains is, what is our story anyways? When writing this speech, I struggled with answering this question. As I reflected, though, I think I realized that I was having trouble because, well, perspective in a story matters. In other words, we each have a slightly different version of the story of Class of 2021. My story of our class remembers our competitiveness that always pushed me harder, and our collaborative camaraderie against schoolwork, like when Eddie Hahn would make physics review videos that our entire class would desperately cram the night before tests. But just a few seconds ago, Brian told a different story about his experience within our class. And I'm for sure Christine will be giving us a distinct perspective when she speaks at the end of our ceremony as well. Another reason why it was so difficult to answer that question of what our story was is because, well, our story isn't done yet. When Eliza uttered the words I quoted at the beginning of this speech, the play Hamilton was coming to her close and her story was over. Our story, however, it's just beginning. So class of 2021, as we go our separate ways, promise me this. Write a story that we can all be proud of. A story that we will all remember. A story they'll tell when we're long gone. Thank you. Congratulations to us all. Oh,
this world is dead. So, so many places, the things that I did, yeah, with every broken bone, I swear I live. Each year, seniors are invited to submit two statements that they would like read on their behalf as they approach the stage to collect their diplomas. Now, I've done a little bit of light editing for some of them to keep it to two statements. But these are their words, and hopefully I have remained true to the sentiments that they've put in them. With the first rows, please stand and face the stage. Our first graduate to honor today is Edward An Shin. Edward will be continuing his studies at Tufts University. He's thankful to all his friends and family for the support they have given him throughout his 14 years at SIS. Jessica An. Jessica is excited to start her new journey at NYU Steinhardt, where she'll be studying applied psychology. She would also like to give special thanks to her parents, who have stayed by her side until the end, as well as her friends and teachers who have supported her throughout her SIS journey, and wish everyone good luck to everyone else on their future journey as well. You see what I mean about getting that into one statement. Nathan Bay. Nathan would like to thank his family and teachers throughout his 12 years at SIS, especially Miss Lee Eun Sung, for her help during middle school. He's also proud to have set the example that you can get into college without having to take more than three AP courses throughout high school. That's impressive, Nathan. Congratulations. Brian Bach. Brian will be attending Case Western Reserve this upcoming fall, and he would like to thank his family and friends for supporting him for the last four years. But he would also like to apologize to all the teachers whose life he made that much more difficult. <laughs> Apology accepted, Brian. Hyunmin <laughs> Chang. Ben Lin would like to thank his teachers, friends, and family for helping him become who he is today. 
and he will be studying at Johns Hopkins University in the fall. Michelle Chan. During her four years of high school when she was not studying for exams, Michelle developed her leadership skills through positions like varsity cross-country captain, president of Triumph Honor Society, second chair principal of high school strings, and chemistry division leader of science club. Next, she will be heading to the University of Pennsylvania to study material science and engineering at the School of Engineering and Applied Science. I checked the grammar, that is two segments. Min Chang. Min will be attending the University of Rochester, majoring in anthropology. She would also like to thank her family and friends for always supporting her. She loves you, mom and dad. Andrew Young Min Cho. Andrew will continue pursuing his interests and passion at Georgetown University. He would like to thank his family for their undivided attention and support, night league members for their help throughout the most turbulent times of high school, and finally the VSM for the joyful, unforgettable late night discord calls and sleepovers. Christine Cho. Christine has been a student at SIS since 2008 and would like to express her gratitude to her family, friends, and faculty for supporting her 13-year journey. She's going to Northeastern on a full ride as an architectural, designs, uh, architectural studies and design major. Michael Cho. Michael spent his time at high school having no idea what was going on, but somehow he got lucky and came out of it okay. I can confirm that. His greatest pride are his closest friends, and he wants everyone to know that his friends are some of the most amazing people in the universe. And on a side note, he's also going to Stanford. Edward Hyungjin Che. Edward would like to congratulate his parents for sending the last of their kids to college. Congratulations. He looks forward to continuing his studies in the field of business. Addy Che. Addy would like to sincerely thank his family, teachers, and friends, especially Knight League, for helping him make the most out of his years in SIS. He's planning to further his studies as an architecture major at Rice University. Celine Che. Celine will be studying data science at UC Berkeley this upcoming fall. She wants to thank her family, friends, teachers, and others who showed unconditional support through her high school career. <laughs> Elaine Che. <laughs> Elaine will be furthering her studies at the University of Southern California. She wants to thank herself, her family, friends, and therapists for getting her through to her 14 years at SIS. Yeah. Amen. Andrew Jun Guan Che. Andrew would like to thank all his friends and family for supporting his rather tumultuous journey. He will be continuing his academic studies at Tufts University. Andrew Jun Ho Che. Andrew would like to thank his family, friends, and teachers for their love and support and give special shout out to all the Lunch FC members as the founder and starter goalkeeper. He will be continuing his studies in molecular biology at UC Berkeley. Okay, I think that's time for the next row. Please stand. Come on up, Justin. Justin Che. Justin would like to acknowledge his family, friends, his, his big nose, Bobo, Beaver, Hulk, GP, Song, Mandu, as well as his Lunch FC, Lemon Crew, Golden Trio, and Mazzy Love Club friends to always smile as much as his eyes can in the future. 
Hmm. He will be out from UC Berkeley in chemistry major, uh, as a chemistry major, excited to explore dream and discover new aspects of his life. Still trying to process that first one. Next we have Francis Quebec Che. Next we have Unyong Che. Unyong regrets to inform you that she will be leaving SIS. She wishes you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you, Unyong. Dennis Choi. <laughs> Dennis will continue his studies at UC Santa Barbara, and he wants to thank his friends and family for their endless support through his high school life, especially the members of the volleyball team and the VSM members for devoting their hearts to an everlasting friendship. You're not Chun. Yuna expresses her deepest gratitude to her family, friends, and teachers who always challenge her to become a better person, stay by her side through lows, and never see a limit to her potential. She looks forward to what the future holds and is excited to continue her studies as a public health and sociology major at Johns Hopkins University. Not present, wait a second, see, not present today is Alexis Chung, but we did want to read her name. And now, we have Sunjun Stephen Chung. Stephen will be studying at Georgetown and he wants to thank his friends, especially Night League and family for getting through high school. Hopefully not in that order. Yuli Chung. Yuli thanks God, her family, teachers, and friends who helped her through high school and create friendships and memories to last a lifetime. Yuli will be continuing her studies at Brown University. Joshua, uh, Joshua entertained and inspired for the past three years, past five years, by Jindaroo's game, Simple Planes, will be attending the Cooper Union to study civil engineering. He would like to thank his family for their endless support, his friends for their bad memes, and God for the unwavering spirit to help him through this process. Angelica Un. Angelica would like to thank her friends and family for making her laugh through her pain. She's happy to say she has finished serving her four-year sentence. Who has the heart to tell her what college is? Maybe they'll let you out for good behavior. <laughs> Grace Gaines. Of course, Grace would like to thank her parents, friends, and teammates for a, such a wonderful life experience so far. She would also like to mention she actually stopped believing in Santa a few years before she was told. Take that, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Edward Hum. Eddie will be attending the UCA Samueli School of Engineering to study bioengineering. He'd like to thank his parents, teachers, and all of his friends, respectfully. <laughs> Brian Hum. <laughs> Brian would like to thank his family and friends, respectfully, for their endless support. He will be uh, studying applied mathematics and journalism at Harvard University. <laughs> you think you're scared of numbers now. Albert Hong. Albert was an ardent member of the Robotics Club and Community Service Club during his time at SIS. He will be attending the NYU Stern School of Business in the fall with a concentration in finance. He'd like to express his endless gratitude to his friends and family for their continuous support in his journey. Anthony Hong. No relation. Anthony will be studying electrical engineering at the Georgia Institute of Technology. He would like to thank his family and friends for constantly supporting him.
Do you know her? Do you know we'll be continuing his studies at UC Berkeley? He wants to thank his friends and family for their continuous support throughout high school, especially thanks to the tennis team, members, coaches, and VSM members for their devotion and endless support. I think we have the next row. So we have Evelyn Herr. Evelyn would like to thank her family, friends, and teachers for their support and inspiration throughout her time at SIS. She will be attending Stanford University as a prospective biology major. Eric Huang. Eric was a passionate member of the Tiger Times, Soul Light, High School Student Council, and Varsity Soccer Team. He would like to thank his family, teachers, and friends respectfully, and will continue his studies at Harvard University this fall. <laughs> Yin Chan Huang. Yin was an active representative of SIS as an executive member of the Student Council and the tri uh, tri varsity student athlete who wants to thank his family members, teachers, Night League, VSM, and finally Junie for reminding how much he appreciates everyone. With loads of unforgettable school memories, he plans to pursue his academic endeavors in biology at Stanford. Alex Hyun, got to keep that mask up, buddy. This marks Alex's 13th year in this school, and he's dedicated his time playing basketball, socializing with his friends, and participating in multiple school activities. Alex will pursue a business major and then a career in business. Song Yun Jung. Song would like to thank all of his teachers, family members, except his brother, and friends respectfully for his heart, their heartwarming support. Song's brother, I tried to convince him to take that out, but he wouldn't. <laughs> Jessica Jew. <laughs> Jessica would like to express her gratitude toward her family, friends, teachers, peers, and for their endless support during her 14 years at SIS. She will be continuing her studies at Mount Holyoke College. Lynn Jung. Lynn would like to thank her family and friends for all their support during her high school years and in the future she hopes to study the field of engineering and later contribute and give back to society. We look forward to that, Lynn. Irene Jung. Irene was a part of the art community at SIS, holding a specific goal that stayed clear and unfaltering. She continued to hone her art and design skills since middle school. She would like to thank her family, friends, and teachers for the immense support they have given her and will continue to pursue her artistic endeavors at ACCD, Entertainment Design Concept Art Track in Pasadena. <laughs> Isabel Jung. With 10 years of experience at SIS, Isabel is excited to move to Boston to start a fresh journey with new faces where she hopes to explore film and screenwriting. She'd like to thank her family and friends who supported her decision. Not attending today, we have Michelle Jung, but she would like to pass on to everyone. Good luck, goodbye, and stay healthy, everyone. Thanks. Hugh <laughs> he would like to wish his brother the best of luck in finishing the rest of his military service, and he will be attending Duke University to study computer science. <laughs> Wendy Cowan. 
Wendy would like to thank her friends and family for keeping her sane during her time in high school. She will be attending the University of California, Berkeley, continuing her studies in chemical engineering. <laughs> Alan Cobb. Alan hopes that everyone's having a nice time at graduation. And he would also like you to know that he'll be continuing his studies as a member of Emory University's class of 2025. Eileen Kim. In addition to celebrating Eileen's graduation, she wants everyone to know that today is also a day to congratulate her parents for graduating from 18 long years of babysitting her. As she moves on to study politics at Georgetown, she will always thank her family, friends, and some teachers for surviving these 12 years with her. Some teachers. <laughs> Alex Kim. Alex will continue his studies at UC Berkeley as an undecided major. He would like to express his special gratitude to his family, friends, and VSM for helping him through the toughest of times with unconditional love and support. Andy Kim. Andy will be studying anthropology at NYU. Ashley Kim. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Ashley, you're up. Next row. I didn't mark it in the book. Wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ashley would like to thank her friends and her family, especially her mother Janice and Christine, for oh, use a comma. Especially her mother, Janice and Christine, for supporting her throughout her 13 years at SIS for making it a truly memorable experience. She is excited to be continuing her studies and passion for art at the Rhode Island School of Design this fall. Christine Kim. Christine will be continuing her studies in environmental biology at Columbia University. She would like to thank her friends, family, and teachers who supported her through her 14 years she was at SIS. And we have Dongjin Christopher Kim. Claire Kim. Claire would like to thank her friends and family, especially her two brothers, for constantly bullying her as the middle child. She will pursue her studies in the field of sociology at UC Santa Barbara in the fall. Tony Kim. Tony would like to thank his organic chemistry tutor, Bozeman Science, and Paul's online notes for their invaluable aid during high school, as well as his friends, teachers, and most importantly, his family for their endless support over his past 10 years at SIS. He'll be taking these memories and lessons with him to the University of Toronto this fall, where he will continue to explore his passions and interests in computer science. <laughs> Irene Kim. Irene would like to thank her family, friends, and teachers for their endless support throughout her 11 years at SIS. She will be continuing her studies at Wellesley College, studying political science and international relations. Jihyun J. Kim. Jay would like to thank her friends, teachers, mentors, and the Hong Kong debate community for their irreplaceable roles in her life. She will be returning home to Chicago this fall to pursue a double major in political science and statistics at the University of Chicago. Jimin Kim. Jimin will be studying international relations at USC this fall. 
and the Mexican Monster signing off. Jin Ha Kim. Jin wants to thank his teachers and the school for their extensive efforts for dealing with COVID and senioritis. He hopes COVID will soon become better, but we know senioritis won't. Jin will be attending MIT this upcoming fall. Michelle Kim. Michelle will be going to School of Art Institute of Chicago. Riley Kim. Riley will be attending the University of Rochester to continue his studies in business entrepreneurship. He would like to thank his friends for giving him the best high school experience and make his family proud as he begins his new journey. Suman Kim. Suman will be continuing her studies at Washington University in St. Louis. She wants to thank her family and friends for the support given throughout her what seemed like forever high school journey. Jasmine Coe. Jasmine was the founder of the Lumiere Film Club and a dedicated member of various other clubs. She would like to thank her family, friends, teachers, and God, and will continue her passion for film and media studies. Erin Lee. Erin was a dedicated member of RCY Choir, and she thanks her teachers, friends, and family for their love and support throughout her high school career. She cannot wait to leave high school and continue her studies at UC Irvine, where she will be partying 24-7, enjoying her college life, and missing her friends and family. Okay. <laughs> Eunice Lee. Eunice would like to thank her parents, sister, and friends for being supportive of all her endeavors throughout her four years in high school. She will be continuing her studies in chemistry and environmental sciences at UCLA. Jiwon Lee. Jiwon was a great vice president of the Mu Alpha Theta Club, managing editor of Tiger Times, and co-president of the Quill and Scroll Club. She would like to thank her friends, teachers, and family for supporting her journey to MIT, where she will be pursuing a degree in mathematics and computer science. And gets the Sensible Shoes Award. We have the next row. First we have Edward Lee. Edward came here in the eighth grade and now he's leaving. He's going to the States to study that history stuff, so thanks to all who helped him along the way. Rachel Lee. Rachel was a dedicated member of Ambassadors and Tri-M and was the editor-in-chief of Kaleidoscope. She would like to thank her friends and family for always supporting her and she will be continuing her academic career at Northeastern University where she will be studying political science and human services. <laughs> Jaehyun David Lim. David will be attending the University of Notre Dame at the Mendoza College of Business. He wishes to thank his friends, teachers, and family for all the support leading up to this moment and is looking forward to what the next four years hold in store. Go no Iris. Jay Song Lim. Jay Song will be on the pre-medical track at Rice University. He would like to thank all of his friends, teachers, and most importantly, his parents for supporting him throughout his high school career, respectfully. Unki Ellen Min. Ellen was a dedicated member and captain 
of the Varsity Girls tennis and basketball teams and would like to thank her, not only her family and friends, but also her coaches, Mr. Miller, Mr. Kester, Mr. Tyvan, for treating her like their own. She will be continuing her studies at the University of California, Irvine. Daniel Sungimin. Daniel would first like to thank his family and teachers for supporting his long endeavors at SIS. He will continue his studies at Northwestern University, majoring in economics and statistics. Okay, well, not present today is Kyungmin Kristen Moon. She would like to thank her family, friends, counselors, and teachers for their support and love these past four years that she would not have made it through without them. She will continue her studies at Vanderbilt University in the Peabody College of Education and Human Development. I hope you're watching, Kristen. And now we have Sophia Moon. Sophia would like to thank her friends and family for their support during her time at SIS. She plans to continue her studies at Washington University in St. Louis. Next we have Benjamin Moon. Now we have Joshua Nam. Joshua will be attending the University of Detroit seven year accelerated dental program. Much love to his friends, teachers, and most of all his family who supported him through this hectic period of his life. Cheers to everyone. It's only uphill from now. Emily O. Emily would like to thank her parents for their unwavering love and support, her teachers for their guidance, and her friends for their existence. Once she's recovered from her 13 years at SIS, Emily will continue her studies in journalism and economics at Northwestern University. <laughs> Next we have Jay Wan On. Jay Wan would like first to thank all of those who have helped him adapt and successfully graduate from SIS. From Malaysia to Brazil and now to the U.S., he will be continuing his academic and personal interests at Northeastern University. And we have Alex Park. Clara Park. Clara will be continuing her studies at the University of Virginia. She's thankful for her friends and family who have always supported her and made the end of this chapter so beautiful. Janice Park is not in attendance today. Janice will be attending Johns Hopkins University in the fall. Leo Park. In high school, Leo was a passionate clarinet player, science student, and badminton player who would now like to thank his family, friends, and teachers who supported him through the 13 years he's been at SIS. After graduating, he will be attending the University of Chicago, hoping to major in biological chemistry. <laughs> Ashley Park. Oh, sorry. Need to mark these rows. Ashley was a dedicated member of the art community as the editor-in-chief of the yearbook. She would like to thank her friends and family for the immense support they have shown her throughout her academic career. The last four years will be continuing her endeavors at Carnegie Mellon University as a fine arts major. We have Jomin Sean Lee.
Abigail Wood. Abigail Reed is glad to be leaving Soma International School and will hopefully fix her ridiculous sleep schedule, which of course is a lie, but it's still an attempt, nonetheless. Good luck with that. Christopher Shen. Christopher would like to thank his family, friends, and teachers for all their love and support during his time at SIS. He will go on to continue his studies at Stanford University, where he, where he will be majoring in history. <laughs> Jitsu Shin. Jitsu would like to thank her family, friends, and teachers for their continued support that made all of this possible. She's excited to continue her studies at Carnegie Mellon University, where she will be studying at the Institute for Politics and Strategy. There may be hope for us after all. Hannah Yanu Sun. <laughs> Hannah will be furthering her studies at Brown University. She would like to thank her amazing family, her beautiful friends, and her own newfound self for loving her always. <laughs> Awan Song. Awan would like to thank her friends, family, and teachers for the support they gave her in the past three years that she spent at SIS. Awan will be continuing on in her education at NYU. <laughs> Madeline Um. Maddie wants to thank her family and newfound friends for their love and support. She would also like to thank SIS for being the final contender for her high school experience. Not in attendance is Joanne Yang. Joanne wants to thank her family and her friends for their unending support throughout high school. She will continue her studies at Cornell University. Hope you're watching, Joanne. <laughs> Sung Min Yi. Sung Min will be continuing his studies at the Stern School of Business at New York University. He would also like to thank the badminton team and Dr. Taiban for the relentless effort and support throughout his high school career. Clara Yin. Clara wants to thank her family and friends for their love and support all throughout her 12 years at SIS. She will be continuing her studies in biology and the pre-dentistry track at the University of Southern California. Anna Yu. Anna was an esteemed student of performing arts as well as a devoted science student at Seoul International School. She would like to thank her parents and will continue her studies at the University of Southern California as a neuroscience major on her pre-med track. Christine Yu. Christine will be attending New York University College of Arts and Science in the fall to continue her studies in anthropology. She would like to thank all of her family members and her friends for supporting her throughout the years, making her time at SIS an unforgettable and memorable experience. <laughs> Eric Yoon. Eric would look first like to congratulate the class of 2021 for overcoming the odds and not spreading a COVID case in the senior lounge. And second, shout out Blue Notes members for combo number one and for making it without a doubt the best music club at SIS. He wants to thank his loving mother, friends, and teachers for their continued guidance and support and plans to major in neuroscience at Wesleyan University. John Yoon. John was a top class student and leader within the SIS community. He will continue making an impact studying pre-med at Dartmouth College. But before he goes, he wants to thank his parents, his brothers from the 5350, 
NL and VSM for supporting him, and we will strive to become, and he will strive to become a better person. I'm assuming the 5350 NL and VSM know who you are. And last but not least, Ye Wan Yu. Sarah attended SIS for six years, during which she was the president of the STEM Club and a senior member of NAHS. She'll be continuing her studies at Carnegie Mellon University's College of Fine Arts program. And as the last person to graduate today, she wants to thank her friends and family for supporting her throughout her journey and send the best wishes to everyone in the class of 2021. And that concludes the presentation of the diplomas to the seniors of 2021. All right, we have three awards to give out today to some special seniors, and um, so nice that upon graduation, the skies have lit up for us, right? All right, the first award is from the head of school, and it's presented to Sean Yoon in recognition of his exemplary behavior and contribution to the positive climate in our school and the global community. Sean? Next award is the Principal's Award in recognition of academic achievement, service to the school, and positive attitude in all aspects of school life. The Principal's Award goes to Eddie Hahn. And finally, it's my honor to present the Founders Award in recognition of her exemplary citizenship, reliability, and integrity to Yu Li Chung. I'd like to call up Christine Kim to give the benediction. Friends, family teachers, and the SIS administration team, good evening. For those of you who miss my name, Hi, I'm Christine Kim, and I should start off by saying that it is an honor to be at this podium, which, believe me, is probably the most memorable way to conclude my 14 years here at Seoul International School. As I've learned all throughout my elementary, middle, and high school years here, and in Mr. Kowalski's AP seminar class, a speech needs to begin with a thesis, or at the bare minimum, an outline of what I'll be spilling from my mouth. So today in my speech, I'll keep it brief. You may have been expecting elaborate analogies or deep analyses of our future impact on the world, 
there are inspirational quotes to follow our shining dreams. But let's be real. We all knew that was Brian and Eric's job, not mine. Hence I said, since all throughout high school, 90% of school talk were about complaining about Mr. Meckling storing away our bags from hallways and the limited number of senior absences that we all effectively used to the brim, I'll try to illuminate the bright side of things. Consequently, in AP research terms to make Dr. Tyler proud, the main question that will be leading our discourse today is, what makes the class of 2021 so special? And my ultimate conclusion was, we survived. And I'm not just talking about the recent pandemic, and believe me, it's a surprisingly long list. We survived the SARS virus pandemic that broke out in the years we were born, that witnessed one of the worst civilian accidents, canceling our first and last elementary school trip for the graduating fifth grade class. Then came the MERS outbreak in the year 2015 when we were just sixth graders. Even now, our last two years of high school have been bordering on havoc due to COVID, losing our two opportunities for prom and our regular graduation. And finally, we passed the worst stages of senioritis, though we did bring it upon us when over half of the class didn't submit our grant statements by Mr. Macklin's duty. That says a lot about our work ethic, really, and I sincerely worry about our future colleges. But all jokes aside, at this point, it seems like a higher being is actively hating on us. But again, as the optimist I am, I see the better things. Though our survival has barely been approved by sheer luck, as the saying goes, <clears throat> luck is skill. Our class is now forever equipped with a mindset that nothing can stop us, not pandemics, lures of Netflix during Zoom classes, or just ourselves. We are ready to see what awaits us at every single turn. And now to present the counter-argument. In all honesty, every student born between the years 2002 and 2003 have experienced similar things. We could have earned a similar education somewhere else. We could have learned English somewhere else, even go to a Korean school and end up in university all the same. But SIS has given us, given me the privilege to stay here for almost a decade and a half to where I met my people. Being here has also allowed me the privilege of learning everyone's names and somehow getting to know everyone's relationships and drama, whether I liked it or not. The point is, I would have never had the chance to relive all of these memories in a graduation speech had I not gone to SIS. Costly in terms of finances and mental health? Sure. Worth it? Maybe. But when I say, remember when we used to play dodgeball in the big white circle on this field? At least a few know what I'm saying. Or when I say, remember when that middle school building didn't even exist? So I'll be thinking of the same scene that I reminisce about. But if we'd gone to a different school, most likely a public Korean one, our memories would not align. We would have lived disjuncted lives until we met further down the road, or maybe not at all. But so many of my valuable memories start way before our recent years, and this, I think, is what makes us special. Although my 14 year skip ends right now, let's not act like this is the last time we're seeing each other or this school. We might think, why I'm never coming back to this ever, which I know all of my friends say. But we may just come once, just once in 10 years from now, to reminisce the same bad memories in a different light. And we may be headed to different destinations, but we know we'll see each other in Aqua someday, probably drunk, and we'll go back to our homes when we need a bridge from life. And now as a good speech always should, I'd like to conclude by giving a brief summary as quoted from our AP Lit classes. I, for one, after not telling my mom and dad that I'd be speaking today, I hope this is a great surprise gift for all you've ever done for me. And as the last student speaker for the class of 2021, for all my friends who will never, ever admit that they think they're moms and dads, I'd like to tell you on behalf of them, thank you for letting us hold decade-long friendships, for letting us meet the people we crossed in our lives because whether we like it or not, Many of them were formed on this very campus we now use to call school. Thank you.
Wow, thank you. Thank you to Christine, Eric, and Brian for their wonderful speeches today. Thank you for all, all for attending and uh, making this such a nice ceremony. I, I certainly uh, would like to thank our business management office, our administrative staff, and our facilities for their incredible hard work in setting all this up for us uh, under clouds and rain sometimes to make the ceremony happy happen. So uh, uh, big appreciations to them. Congratulations, graduates, you've done it. Uh, at the, uh, I now ask the graduating class of 2021 to please stand for the turning of the tassel ceremony to officially end today's event. At some point in each graduation ceremony, new graduates are asked to officially move their tassel from the right side to the left side of their mortar board, signifying the finality of their graduated status. Graduates, please turn your tassels. Parents, faculty, students, and guests, I now present to you the graduates of the SIS class of 2021. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you everyone, that concludes our 44th graduation ceremony for Southern International School. We'll have a stage for us for another hour, so please feel free to, free to join us on stage for PhotoZone. Uh, the blue weather we ordered this morning came a little late, but thank you all for joining us. Welcome, alumni.